Hi, my name is Phil Gardner and welcome to Fun With Boxes. Well, today I'm taking a look at a super little game and this game is called Flick Fleet, the Imperium versus the Uprising. And this is a dice dexterity game of deep space destruction. Wow. And it's for two players. We'll take you around 20 minutes to play and it's for ages Eight up, and this is a game designed by Jackson Pope and Paul Wilcox from Yuri Dice Games, and this looks rather rather intriguing. I must admit, flick fleet, flick your ships into firing position, flick your dice at your opponent's ships to destroy them. Victory lies indeed at your fingertips in this rather amazing looking game. We were so pleased to meet Yuri Dice Games at the UK Games Expo in Birmingham this year and they gave us a copy of this game for us to take a look at on the channel and I'm rather glad they did too because this is fun in a box and when I say fun I mean a lot of dice flicking fun. Dexterity games are not normally my game of choice. Uh, this is obviously due to uh, my tremors. Um, it can lead to some rather humorous gameplay whenever I attempt a dexterity game. But I never let this put me off giving a new dexterity game a go. And indeed there are quite a few dexterity games out there that I have been enjoying recently even though I am spectacularly poor at them as you no doubt can imagine but it does lead to some fantastically humorous moments when I cause wanton destruction in a game whilst I'm trying to play it. Ah, But this game, oh, I was quite intrigued to give this one a go. In this game this is just flicking something on the surface. I'm not having to build something or balance beavers on logs, which Lisa insists that I do quite regularly. She loves it when people play with her beavers. But there are no beavers in this game. No, this is a space game. I don't believe beavers are in space just yet, though they probably are working on it, I would imagine, in between building the odd dam. But until they get into space there are no beavers there currently so why are we talking about them when we should be talking about this rather wonderful game. Let's take a fun with boxes look at what you get in a game of Flick Fleet. <laughs> Well, we've seen what's inside the box, but how does it play? And is it any good? Well, let's take a quick look at how you set up the basic scenario that's recommended to start playing a game of Flick Fleet. Setting up a game of Flick Fleet is very, very straightforward. All you need to do is to create a play area approximately three feet square. Fortunately for me setting this game up, I can set it up in the well of our board game table and I'm using a three foot by three foot play mat to represent the play area. So for this introductory scenario, we can see that the Uprising player takes two destroyers and a round fighter wing and the Imperium player takes a carrier with two fighter wings and a bomber wing that they will be able to launch during the game. And then the setup is simply as you see here. 
During the game you will be placing purple activation cubes on each ship and these are simply used to keep track of what ships you've activated. When you activate a ship you will remove its cube and then perform the actions. Once all the cubes have been removed from ships you can no longer take any actions that round until the other player has finished and has no activation cubes on their ships. And then you would simply place a number of discs onto your ship dashboard as indicated by the dashboard itself. So for this example the carrier we place one colored disc on each of those spaces. One red disc on the defense, one yellow disc on the fighter bay, one orange disc on the bomber bay, one white disc on the shield generator and one blue disc on the engines. Whereas as we can see here for the destroyers they have three red discs placed on their defense grid, one white disc on the shield generator and one blue disc on their engines. And then you grab your dice and you're ready to play. So we've seen how to set up this game but how exactly does it play? Well join me now and we'll have a look and see. Playing the game is very straightforward and play will take place over a number of rounds and during each round players will take turns to activate one of their ships and then perform two actions representing movement, combat and repairs and the player with the most ships in play starts the first round and if tied the uprising player starts the game and then in subsequent rounds the player who most recently activated a ship will go second and on your turn you choose one of your ships with an activation code on it and activate it by removing the cube and then performing two different actions with that ship. Once these two actions are complete it's your opponent's turn to activate one of their ships. If your opponent has no more ships with activation cubes on them keep taking turns until all your ships have been activated. And once all ships have been activated the round ends and then you begin a new round by placing activation cubes back onto each ship in play. So let's take a look at the different ships. Wings. There are fighter wings and there are bomber wings. And wings have only two actions. You can only move and fire weapons. And you can move and fire in either order. And you move them simply by flicking the surfaces highlighted in blue. And when you fire your weapons, you fire one die per remaining piece of the wing. And here the fighter wings fires the 1d10 per piece. Piece, and you can flick anywhere around the outside of the fighter wings to move them. Whereas the bomber wings they fire 1d6 per piece and you can only move them by flicking the rear surfaces to move. As for the capital ships in the game they will all have a ship dashboard and the ship dashboards give you all the information you need to know about those ships. And all the actions that are available to the capital ship are shown on the right hand side of its dashboard. And each action corresponds to a ship location and can be used as long as the location has at least one disc on the space representing the location on the ship's dashboard. The ship will have targeting numbers and these tell you which location is damaged when a die, a d10 or a d6, hits your ship. The white squares are shield spaces and you place a white cube on each of these spaces at the beginning of the game. Damage is dealt to the shields before locations. So let's take a look at the action that may be available. You have a shield generator and you refill one of the shield spaces on the ship dashboard with a white cube. Defense grid. Fire 1d10 per remaining red disc on the defense grid location of the shipboard. Nukes. Fire 1d6 per remaining black disc on the nukes location on the shipboard. Fighter bays. Launch a fighter wing. Bomber bay. Launch a bomber wing. Engines. Move the ship by flicking it on one of the sides highlighted in blue on the ship dashboard. And finally engineering. This location never has a disc on it and can always be chosen as one of your two actions. And what you would do is return a disc that has been removed from the ship dashboard to its original location or return a grey hull cube to the ship dashboard. So for combat in the game you will be using an attack action or fire action to flick your dice and try and hit the enemy ships. And the die will damage the first ship it hits 
whether it's you as or your opponents, unless the die leaves the play area. If a ship is moved when hit by the die, leave it in its new position. It is simply veered off course taking evasive action. And both players can agree that if the ships are so close that the attacker cannot miss, you can just simply assume that there's a hit and roll the die outside of the play area to determine the result. And if the die leaves the play area after hitting one or more ships, the shot was wild and nothing happens. Ships hit by the die suffer no damage and are returned to the positions that they were in before they were hit. Now, when you hit fighter wings and bomber wings, they are damaged regardless of what the die result is. And you will simply remove the outermost fighter piece or the defender's choice of front or back bomber piece. And remove pieces cannot be reused this game. And when the third piece is removed, the wing is destroyed. However, when capital ships are hit, for each point of damage a capital ship receives, you work through this list in order. Starting with the shields. If there are shields up, that is, if at least one white cube is on the dashboard, you remove a white cube from the dashboard regardless of the die result. Next, you move on to if the ship shields are down, that is there are no white cubes on the dashboard, then the die result is important. If the ship is hit and the die roll is 7+, plus, then the hit has been absorbed by the ship's armour and nothing happens. However, if it's a roll of 1 to 6, then if there are one or more discs on the ship's dashboard on the location corresponding to the die result, you remove one disc. However, if there were no discs in that area, you would remove a grey hull cube from the dashboard, though only dreadnoughts have hull cubes. And if there are no hull cubes on the dashboard, the ship is destroyed. Remove it from the play area and flip its dashboard face down. So all very straightforward there. If the dice roll is between 1 and 6 and there are no shields on the ship, you check to see what location has been hit. If there's a disc there, you remove the disc. However, if there are no discs on there, then that ship is destroyed unless it's a dreadnought and has grey hull cubes remaining. One thing to mention here is about nukes. They are particularly powerful weapons. If a nuke hits a ship after calculating and performing the damage as we've looked at, you immediately deal a second point of damage to the same location. Similarly, nukes will damage wings twice, removing two pieces. And the game ends when either the scenario conditions are met or all of one player's ships have either been destroyed or have left the play area. And there are a number of other little rules that you can factor into your game once you're used to playing it, such as ramming and collisions, uh, routed ships and exhaustion of ships. There are also obstacles, so there are static obstacles that cannot be moved and mobile obstacles that can be moved. Permanent obstacles cannot be damaged, however temporary obstacles can be damaged. And there are rules covering that. And the rulebook comes with a number of scenarios for you to play through, a number of different setups. Plus there are a number of scenarios that are freely available direct from their website. So check out the Flick Fleet page on their website for that. Well, what a fantastic fun game. This, this was just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So much fun. So straightforward and, and easy to play as well. Um, but, oh my god, this game is riotous. It is just fantastic fun. I was expecting it to be quite good, but I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. This is a really brilliant, brilliant little game. It was just so clever, just simply flicking dice. Well, they, they have come out with a cracker with this game. But, like I say, I am so grateful for them to give us a copy of this game. And this is the deluxe edition of the game. Um, oh, I'm thrilled. I am simply blown away. It's just simple, simple fun. I highly recommend picking up a copy of this if you can find it somewhere. Oh, or check out Yuri Dice on, online. Um, I'll see. I'll, I'll see if I can put a link up on the screen there for you. Like I say, I would highly recommend picking this game up. This is a big two thunder boxes thumbs up for me. Well, 
I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at Flick Fleet with me as much as I enjoyed playing it. If you did indeed enjoy watching this video, please click that old like button and also please, please hit the subscribe button too. If you would, that would be fantastic for the channel. And in the meantime, as always, please do take care and bye for now.